Together, we believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God presence with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every need. We believe in the Word of God contained in the Old and New Testaments as the sufficient rule both of faith and for practice. We believe in the Church those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reigns of God as a divine will realized in human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumphs of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. Gloria Patri. be seated and let us go into the times of prayer let us right now take some times for our personal silent prayer Eternal God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks and praise that the church is privileged, Lord, to be the sponsors, to be the sponsors of the BB companies. Lord, even as we minister to these boys, we are mindful there are many boys in the communities that need you and need you badly. 
Father, pray that even as we reach out to these boys, you will continue to use this, Lord, to expand your kingdom for your purpose. That many will return to the Creator. Many will return to the Redeemer and find life the everlasting in you. This morning, even as we come together, God, we want to pray for us as a church. Lord, even in times like this, teach us to be relevant to the people outside the church. Teach us to be relevant even in our family as we harness a relationship with one another, as we harness a relationship with one another in the church. Teach us always, Lord, to pray first before we come with each, to each other in deliberating things and issues. Father, at this time also, we want to commit the country of Myanmar to you, even in chaos. Ask the Lord that you restrain the hands of the evil one. Ask the Lord that you restore the nations. Ask the Lord the church will shine for you in times like this to extend their helping hands to those who are in need. We pray for the world even as we roll out the vaccination programs in hope that, Lord, everything will subside. God, teach us to look to you. Only you, Lord, can solve it. We just want to give you thanks, Lord, that we have avenues like this that we can come to you and pray to you. And knowing, Lord, you hear us. And this morning, especially, we want to uphold Pastor Kenneth to you, even as he brings your words to us. We know, Lord, your word will not return in void. Make that word, Lord, as a seed into our lives, that in your times, Lord, it will flourish for your purpose and glory. Thank you for hearing our prayer. For we pray all this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I just want to welcome all of you and also those who are joining us online. Today is a BB Sunday. Uh, it is proper for us to acknowledge our two companies, officers and representatives here. May I invite the second company's uh, officers and, uh, and, and, and the volunteers. Would you please stand and acknowledge you? It's a second company <laughs> from Victoria School. We want to also acknowledge the 60th companies from Rifles Institute. Would you please stand? <laughs> Lovely. Please remain standing. May I invite all those who, are, who was in the BB or still serving in the BB company, alumni or whatever, would you please stand? We want to acknowledge your service. Yes. Lovely. Praise the Lord. May I invite all of you to stand and to greet one another with God's peace. Peace to you. Please be seated. This, two, this morning we will have two sharings and one announcement. Okay? One sharing will come from Boys Brigade, second company, to recording. The other one will be from uh, uh, Boys Brigade, 60th company. Uh, our, the officers, uh, Alan, will come here and share with us. Okay? Let's begin with the Boys Brigade, the second company.
Good morning, pastors, captains and chaplains of the Boys' Brigade 2nd and 6th of Companies, members of the Boys' Brigade and KKMC members. I am Alan Chen from the 6th of Company. Today, I am grateful for the opportunity to share with you my BB testimony as well as 6th of Company's activities in the past year. You probably would not believe me when I say that the Boys' Brigade was not in any of my nine CCA choices back in Secondary 1. I still remember the day CCA outcomes were released. On the class register, instead of seeing a CCA in my choices, I saw the words, please see the CCA HOD. Needless to say, I was disappointed not to have been allocated to a CCA of my choice. I soon learned that I was allocated to the Boys' Brigade, a CCA which I had never heard about. Truth be told, I really struggled in my first few months. Having no prior experience in primary school, it was tough adapting to the culture of a uniform group. The emphasis on discipline, standards, and teamwork was hard to swallow. During this time, the thought of appealing out of BB was always at the back of my mind. Despite my lack of enthusiasm, the people around me did not cast me aside or give up on me. My captain, chaplain, Officers, teachers, primers, seniors, and peers constantly reached out to me and encouraged me to participate in activities. My parents also told me to give BB a chance before forming an impression on it. Gradually, the thought of appealing out of BB faded out of my mind as I started to integrate into the company. As I opened my heart and mind, I soon realized that BB has so much to offer. I started to participate in programs such as blaze, band, and drill competitions. Before I knew it, four years in a senior's program had quickly flown by. Looking back, my journey of growth as a BB boy has only been possible because of the care, love, and guidance from the BB community. Moving into JC, I felt it was natural for me to serve as a primer. And this time, I was assigned to my only CCA choice. The Primus program added another dimension to my BB journey through service to my company and the brigade. It allowed me to better appreciate the work of my officers, teachers, and seniors, most of which was unknown to me as a boy on the receiving end. While I joined Primus primarily to give back to my company and the brigade, I received so much more from those two years. The Primus community is probably my most precious takeaway from JC. I have made lifelong friendships, and to this day, my batch still keeps in close contact with one another. Primus has also been a blessing in my work with God. Having had a supportive and encouraging Christian community around me, I was able to explore Christianity and eventually come to know Christ. After graduating from JC, I returned to 6th to serve as a volunteer adult leader, which brings me to reflect on God's grace in the past year. 2020 was a difficult year for 6th year, and I believe the same can be said for all of us. Physical parades were suspended in March. Many programs, such as March Camp and Blaze, were also cancelled. This was also just as our new SEC ones were beginning to adapt to the company through their recruits program. Overall, it was a disruptive period for everyone, as we were all caught off guard by these sudden changes. Fortunately, we were able to resume parades virtually thanks to the collective effort of our officers, teachers, and primers. Although the circumstances were not ideal, it was encouraging to see how we could creatively adapt our programs and activities to suit remote delivery while retaining their original objectives. For example, our drill committee taught our boys drill through a series of self-made tutorial videos, and we also organized our first ever e-annual parade over Zoom. During the circuit breaker period, one of our primers, Seth Ong, who was then a year five, did some reading up and found out that children from lower income families were hardest hit by the circuit breaker measures. He felt compelled to find ways to help them. Roping in a few friends from 6th year, they responded to Kampong Kapor Family Service Centre's call for tutors for low income families. Both 6th year BB and 45th GB companies came on board this initiative and started by tutoring 11 beneficiaries. Despite the official tuition program ending in August, a few of the BB and GB members continued to volunteer their time until the beneficiaries' exams were over. It is truly heartwarming to see our primers and boys 
take initiative in actively serving the community during these challenging times. As we approach the end of 2020, we received good news from the school that parades could resume again. Once again, this came on short notice. However, with the combined effort of our officers, teachers and privates, we were able to resume parades in school. Some of the activities we conducted included Adventure Quest, BB Cares, Batchwork Lessons and Company Christmas Celebrations. In particular, I would like to share more about BB Cares, which was a community service project in collaboration with KKFSC. This year, our boys were unable to participate in the annual BB Share Give project. As such, the officers and teachers conceptualized BB Cares to be similar to BB Share Gift, but on a smaller scale. Together with a planning team consisting of year three boys, 60 have organized a hamper packing session in school, giving our boys a taste of the BB Share Gift warehouse duty experience. Due to safe management measures, the boys were unable to deliver the hampers to the beneficiaries from KKFSE in person. Instead, we relied on the support of our alumni, teachers, officers, and a few KKMC members to help complete the delivery safely. I am also pleased to share that our Year 6 Primers have embarked on a similar project and will be delivering ham hampers to another 60 beneficiaries by the end of the month. These community service efforts are vital in teaching our boys to be thoughtful and humble citizens who give back to society and appreciate those around them. 60th has been blessed with resources, insights and people during the pandemic. And I believe it is only fitting that we share these blessings and give back to the community. What I have shared today are just a few examples of God's faithfulness to 60th Company in the past year. 2020 has reminded us that God is with us in times of uncertainty and difficulty. There have been moments where we felt like we had run out of ideas for online parades, when we didn't have sufficient manpower to run our programs, or when the endearing spirit of 60th seemed to be threatened. In each one of these circumstances, God has provided for the needs of the 60th community. Through these trials, 60th has emerged better and stronger, hence the theme, Our Steadfast Spirit, for our 30th anniversary celebrations this year. As we continue to navigate the challenges and trials in the coming year, we as a 60th community should be encouraged. We should be encouraged by the perseverance and determination with which we have responded. Encouraged by the history of our company that has overcome trials as daunting as COVID-19. And encouraged by the regular reminders in the scriptures and our own lives of God's faithfulness. Thank you all for your continued prayer and support for this ministry. I wish all of you a blessed VB Sunday. We thank Alan Chang for the heartwarming testimony and sharing. I have one announcement to highlight to you, and that is our Holy Week uh, meeting. Take notes that we will have our online Holy Week meeting. That is from Monday evening, uh, Monday Tuesday and Wednesday, 8 p.m. You can register via our website. The other one is our Holy Week services. Take note that we will have our Monday, Thursday evening service. That is 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we will have our Good Friday service. It's 8 a.m. morning and 10, 10 a.m. morning. As for the Easter Sunday, we do not have the sunrise service but we will have Easter Sunday service, 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. If you want to know more detail, you can go to our KKMC website. And right now, we want to give thanks to God for the offerings that have, bring in, uh, has sent in uh, to the church. Uh, just take note that uh, there are a few ways that you can give your offerings. You can, pay via, you can give via the pay now. You can give via uh, e-transfer, you can give via uh, sending the chat to the church. Okay? And for those who are on site here, after the service, as you leave the sanctuary, there is an offering box there, and you can drop your offerings into the box. Okay? And right now, let us uh, give thanks to God for the offering that we receive, and let us pray. Lord, we give you thanks 
Lord, thank you that you're always, Lord, our provider. Lord, indeed, as we hear what the the 60th company shared and also see what the second company shared, Lord, we know, Lord, we are always invested, Lord, rightly, because, Lord, that is closer to your heart. We ask that, Lord, even as we learn to give, you continue to teach us how to give. Thank you for showing us how you give to us your best in your Son, Jesus Christ. And therefore, Lord, bless the gift and the givers for the purpose of your kingdom. Amen. Let us rise for the doxology. remain standing. Our songs of preparation is recorded by the second company, I Will Run To You.
Amen. Please be seated. Thank God that we can always run to Him for His grace. As you've heard, we, today at KKMC, we celebrate with the Boys' Brigade, Second Company, their 90th birthday this year, and also with the 60th, their 30th birthday this year. KKMC is privileged to be the sponsoring churches for, uh, church for these two companies. Today, we carry on at KKMC our sermon series of learning what it means to be helpless based on the book of Lamentations written by the prophet Jeremiah. As we consider chapter 4, in this chapter, Jeremiah recalled the very terrible experience of Jerusalem being under siege by the Babylonians from January 588 BC to July 586 BC. Over the two years, both rich and poor in that city suffered severely as their lives were turned upside down and they were completely helpless to do anything about it. Jeremiah also identified the cause of this terrible experience of helplessness by the people of Jerusalem as the sin of their leaders. Finally, he mentioned a glimpse of hope in this terrible situation. Today, I ask that you open up your Bibles on your hand phone, or if you have a physical Bible with you, turn to Lamentations 4. As, follow along as I bring you through this chapter. And to help us better understand Lamentations 4, today's sermon will cover three themes. Firstly, the scenario of helplessness, verses 1 to 12 and 17 to 20, scenario of helplessness. Secondly, sin causing helplessness, verses 13 to 16. And finally, Solace in helplessness, verses 21 and 22. Before we hear the word of God preached, let us pray. Father, we thank you for today and bringing us here safely. And even as we learn from Lamentations chapter 4, help us to have a heart that's open to understand how we can better help those who are going through terrible situations of helplessness. Help us have a heart for them, we pray. Amen. Dear friends, firstly, the scenario of helplessness. The experience of people in the people of Jerusalem during the siege was truly one of helplessness. There was no light at the end of the tunnel, as it were. And even if there was light, it was probably the front light of the train barreling down on them in the tunnel. The siege of Jerusalem had led to a total loss of all things that made life comfortable and enjoyable as described in verses 1 to 12 and 17 to 20. Let me bring you through the listing. Firstly, loss of wealth, verse 1. How the gold has grown dim. Assets had been devalued. Secondly, loss of caring in society, verse 3. My people has become cruel like the ostriches in the wilderness. People had stopped looking out for each other, just as ostriches had been known to not care for their young. Thirdly, Loss of basic necessities or essentials. Verse 4, the tongue of the infant sticks to the roof of its mouth for thirst. Children beg for food, but no one gives them anything. The most vulnerable in society sadly suffered the most as water and food were no longer available. Fourthly, loss of status. Verse 6, those who feasted perish in the streets. Those brought up in purple cling to ash heaps. Verse 7 and 8, her princes, now blacker than suit, not recognized their skin has shriveled on their bones. Not even the rich were spared. Fifthly, loss of the desire to live. Verse 9. Happy, happier were those who pierced, happier were those pierced by the sword than those pierced by hunger. A deep cry for relief by those who in their suffering could not see an end to it. Sixthly, loss of moral perspective. Verse 10. Compassionate women had boiled their own children. Sadly, out of utter desperation, something unimaginable was done. Seventhly, loss of security, verse 12. That foe or enemy could enter the gates of Jerusalem. That which never was thought could happen did. Eighthly, loss of hope, verse 17 and 18. 
Our eyes failed, ever watching vainly for help. Our end drew near, our days were numbered, for our end had come. There was no future to be looked forward to as the end neared. And ninthly, loss of rest. Verse 19, our pursuers were swifter. They chased us on the mountains. They lay in wait for us. What a terrible experience to go through. Dear friends, the loss of wealth, of care in society, of basic necessities, of status, of the desire to live, of moral perspective, of security, of hope, and of rest. Losing these made the Jews undergoing the siege in Jerusalem feel totally helpless in their lives as their life became unbearable. Now, when we think about this, these losses that I've just shared are what people who have lost everything will also sadly experience. And I'm sure that there are some of our older members who went through World War II, like my parents, and who are listening today, that can more easily identify with the experiences of loss and helplessness that have been just described. There are also some of us listening who have and are going through a collapse in our, in our lives, a time of collapse, where could be health-related, or the result being retrenched, and then not being able to find another job for a good number of years or due to some other major reasons and you have found and are finding life really tough you too can be you too can more easily identify with the sense of loss and helplessness i guess loss and helplessness were also probably experienced to a large extent by texans who recently experienced an extreme extremely cold spell out of the blue which caused their power grid of that state to fail We've been told that it resulted in no power to many homes, hospitals, etc. As such, no heat from their radiators that they had to break up their own furniture to start a fire just to keep warm. And their homes no longer provided them proper shelter and security. And to add to their misery, their water supply also broke down as water in their pipes froze. Tragically, a number of people sadly died during the cold spell, before the authorities were able to get things back to order. We note that whenever there are severe feelings of helplessness, this results, this results in a loss in one's life. And it will always have an adverse effect on one's health. Feelings of helplessness, severe feelings of helplessness as a result of loss in one's life will always adversely affect one's health. Mental health, there'll be a loss of stability. Physical health, there'll be a loss of wellness. Emotional health, there'll be a loss of peace. Spiritual health, there'll be a loss of faith. Social health, there'll be a loss of support. Now, some of us will remember in 2017, in order to walk in their shoes, that is to walk in the shoes of those facing extreme poverty and hardship in their lives, our church organized the poverty simulation exercise with the help of the Methodist Welfare Services. Participants who put through a series of scenarios of poverty and constant limitation, where the little and whatever one had could and was at times taken away or expanded very quickly as one tried just to survive. It turned out that just trying to survive became extremely hard, and feelings of frustration and of helplessness were experienced. Forwarding, forwarding to this year, with our focus at KKMC of Loving Outreach, especially in the face of COVID-19 and all the challenges and fears that it has brought into our lives. The study of lamentations during this season of Lent is meant to help us remember that if we really, really want to truly reach out in love to others, we must first make every effort to appreciate the struggle of those who are just trying to survive each day and to empathize with them. If we really want to truly reach out in love to those, we must, we must make every effort to appreciate what they are going through and empathize with them. Only then can we begin to be of real relevance to them as they go through really tough times. And hence, the first point of the scenario of helplessness and our effort to understand the losses people experience as a result. But from here, we will then be correct to ask, why did the people of Jerusalem get into this scenario of helplessness in the very first place? The answer is found in the next point of our sermon for today, which is sin causing helplessness. Sin causing helplessness. 
The scenario of helplessness described in Lamentations 4 arose because of the sin of the then leaders of the Jewish people. In fact, we read in horror what the leaders did, as stated in verse 13. It was for the sins of their prophets and the iniquities of their, her priests who shed the blood of the righteous in the midst of her. As the leaders failed to live according to God's ways and values, they got rid of those that did. It was an utter failure of leadership in terms of morality, faithfulness, and integrity. And so God called them to account, as we read in verse 16. The Lord himself has scattered them. He will regard them no more. No honor was shown to the priests, no favor to the elders. In other words, the leaders were found wanting and so lost their privilege of leadership for they failed to carry out their duty of leadership according to God's word. And so with leaders like these, it is no wonder that the people they led did wrong also and as a result, and as a result had to answer for their own wrongdoing. They too were called to account as we read in verse 6 and 11. So very sad. Yet, dear friends, more tragically, more tragically, it is the fact that innocent bystanders and very often children, as we read in verse 4, they are also caught up in the wrong done as a result of the immoral decisions made by leaders and made to suffer. This point emphasizes that we must always pray for leaders of national, societal and church levels so that they will not compromise their integrity and morals or else their people will suffer. Yet today, let me share that there is another level of leadership at the fundamental unit of society of the family, where if failure takes place, the consequences are always severe. And so we must also pray for this level of leadership. And to encourage us to do so, allow me to share this sad but true story about the failure of leadership in a family that caused it to fall apart. It involved a Christian husband and father who had become addicted to gambling. He attended one of the churches I formerly pastored, and one day he requested to see me. He told me about his problem of gambling, which commenced when he started to go to his club in between his appointments with clients, and then started playing with the one-arm bandit slot machine. Soon it became serious and then an addiction. As he went to spend more time at the slot machine, as well as other forms of gambling then, at work or at family. And all the while, he appeared to be a dedicated Christian serving in church, a loving husband, and a dutiful father. It was not too long before his addiction to a gambling led him to be in debt to a sum of nearly $200,000. As a result, he could not hide it any longer from his wife or family. Yet the sad reality was that he would not stop gambling even though his family had been dragged into trying to pay off his debt as they sold off their home. Eventually, living in a state of helplessness due to the sins of her husband, which could, which, who would not change, the wife sadly had to petition to divorce him. And as, he, and as a result, he lost the love of his wife and the respect of his children. Dear friends, the failure of moral leadership at the family level is happening too often. It, does, it doesn't just involve gambling. It has to do with unfaithfulness, etc. And it has to stop. And we need to help it stop. If not, we'll end up with having many families being in situations of helplessness as a result of the sins of the leaders of the family. And how we help leaders of families make proper moral decisions is a big topic that needs to be handled on another day. But in the meantime, we need to also help those caught up in the scenario of helplessness due to the sins of leaders. How can we do this? The answer is found in the third point of today's sermon. Solace in helplessness. You see, the Jews experiencing the siege in Jerusalem, what they wanted to know was when their suffering would end. They wanted solace in their helplessness, in other words, comfort or consolation. And this came in the promise of their accountability for their wrongdoing by God, that it would only be for a time and not forever. 
And then also in the promise that the enemies will also be brought to account by God. You see, we read in verse 22, the punishment of your iniquity, O daughter of Zion, is accomplished. He, God, will keep you in exile no longer. But your iniquity, O daughter Edom, he will punish, he will uncover your sins. You see, with these two promises, there came solace, comfort and consolation to those going through this time of helplessness, giving them a sense of hope and a sense of justice. Now, having both hope and justice is so important in helping those suffering in their helplessness. And for us Christians, when we observe Holy Week, and for this year at the end of March and early April as announced, we always draw strength from the messages of hope and justice as we remember the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, on the cross on Good Friday, as well as the triumphant resurrection of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, on Easter Sunday. The issue for us is how do we help those in helplessness, in their helplessness, such that they find solace in terms of hope and justice. The reality is that we must give them practical help and support them as much as possible. And today being Boys Brigade Sunday at KKMC, we want to affirm to all that the rendering of practical help and support to those in need is what the Boys Brigade is clearly known for. And through its initiative of BBCAS, which is, stands for Community Activities Rallying Everyone to Serve, which involves all BB companies in a day of meaningful community activities to engage school parents and stakeholders to collaborate with organisations to do more for the community, especially those in need of help. And secondly, BB Share, a gift project, which was started in 1988 as a community service project that promotes the spirit of caring and sharing amongst the local community during the Christmas season especially. It's an annual event of mobilising BB officers, members, with volunteers to collect grocery items and gifts to be distributed to the needy. And they gather supporters to do the same. It was reported in 2018 that more than 40,000 beneficiaries receive help. Many of our KKMC members, former Boys Brigaders, especially from the second company, were directly involved in starting this particular project. See, dear friends, efforts of help, whether by individuals like us or organisations like the Boys Brigade, will bring some level of hope and a sense of justice to those who are feeling helpless, so that they may experience solace, comfort, consolation in their times of distress. And so as a recap for today, from Lamentations 4, we have explored three themes. Scenario of helplessness, sin causing helplessness, and solace in helplessness. Now, I'd like to say that we at KKMC I'd like to say again that we at KKMC are privileged to be the sponsoring church for the second company at Victoria School and the 60th company at Raffles Institution. And they are celebrating major years this year. Second company is 90th anniversary, second, 60th is 6th, 30th anniversary. And we praise God for his faithfulness to our two companies and the dedicated service of all officers, principals, teachers, chaplains, boys and girls, parents, past and present. And again, to you all, thank you very much for your faithful service. Okay, those from our second and our 60th company, well done. Just a quick reminder from KKMC. Our, for second company, our chaplain is Pastor K. Leong, our captain is Robin Chinavan. And our, for 60, 60th company, our chaplain is Lyndon Gunn, and our captain is John Samuel. So we thank God for all this. Huh? We thank God for truly enabling KKMC to be part of this important movement. Some of us may not know, but Boys Brigade was started in 1883 by William A. Smith. And it was introduced into Singapore in 1930 by James Milner Fraser. The motto of the Boys Brigade is sure and steadfast. Sure and steadfast. It's based on Hebrews 6.19, which states, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. The anchor and the cross refer to Jesus, of course. And the object of the Boys' Brigade shall be the advancement of Christ's kingdom among boys and the promotion of habits of obedience, reverence, discipline, self-respect, and all that tends towards a true Christian manliness. 
In practice, the object means members are helped to become loyal and responsible citizens to develop and grow in moral character and to strengthen their physical fitness and to develop their leadership potential. Dear friends, as a BB alumni from a different company, I can tell you this is true. In fact, Boys Brigade teaches boys and girls to inculcate three things. Firstly, empathetic caring. To help them better appreciate the losses suffered by those who are in a state of helplessness and to feel empathy for them. Empathetic caring. Secondly, good values or godly leadership. To help them to, make more, to, help them to take more seriously the sin of moral failure of leaders and to understand its consequences on its people. And thirdly, loving service to help them to be more determined to bring solace, comfort, and consolation in terms of hope and justice to those in dire circumstances through practical steps. These three things, empathetic, caring, good values, godly, good values or godly leadership, and loving service are truly needed for anyone seeking to respond correctly to those who are undergoing moments of helplessness and to make a real difference in their lives in loving outreach. BB does that for its boys and girls, and I thank God for that. Now, for any of us who want to support the Boys' Brigade, especially our two companies, BB Week is until the 4th of April, and we can provide, helping, uh, provide funding for the 2nd and 60th company by going to our church website or Facebook and follow the instructions there. Finally, in closing, my prayer is that God will bless the Boys' Brigade, 2nd and 60th company especially, and also KKMC as we seek to bless others in loving outreach. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the lessons that we have learned from Lamentations 4. Forgive us when in our hurry in life we forget to help those who are in a state of helplessness. Forgive us whenever we fail in our leadership. Forgive us whenever we do not bring hope or justice to those in need. Help us, we pray, to be people known for this, known for being caring, empathetic caring, known for good leadership, godly leadership, and known for people who are involved in loving service. All this for your glory. Amen. Holy Communion elements on your hand. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Please be seated. Together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We have feared to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cries of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us from joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proved God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and so with your people on earth and all the companies of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. 
Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptisms of his suffering, death and resurrection, you give birth to your church. Deliver us from slavery to sins and death and make with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciple and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciple and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us, gather wherever we are, and as we partake these gifts of consecrated bread and cup, make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may, we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by His blood. By your Spirit, Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Jesus comes in his final victory and we feast as his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honour and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now with the confidence of children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For Thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Because there is one Lord, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. The cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Let us rise. May I invite you to hold the elements on your hand. And would you please uh, peel off the first layers of plastic. And hold the bread on your hand. And likewise for those who are watching online, you have the consecrated element with you also. We will wait for one another. You may remove your mask now. This is the body of Christ broken for us. Take, eat in remembrance of Him. You may remove the second layer's foil.
This is the blood of Christ shed for us. Take, drink, in remembrance of Him. Let's put on your mask. Let's pray the Thanksgiving prayer together. Together, eternal Lord, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Praise God for us grace through the sacrament of Holy Communion. Let's remain standing as the choir will sing. Will your anchor hold? And we worship God in our hearts. May the words of this wonderful hymn encourage us. Trust God, let's trust Jesus, the anchor of our soul. Let's remain standing for the benediction, his good words in our lives, followed by the sending forth, which will be the BB Vesper. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of us, especially all the boys of the 2nd and 60th Company, all members of these companies, so that we may always do things for your glory. In the glory of God. Amen. Please be seated. Today we close our service at the post 
a special recording of the bagpipers of the 60th company. Let's sit back and listen. We close this service with a reminder to God be the glory. God bless you all for coming. Those on dry, who joined us online, God bless you all also. Let's all have a good week and bring God glory. God bless. For those who are in the sanctuary, uh, we ask your help. Put on the gloves that we have given to you and help us just wipe down the seat where you are at. Uh, those who are here for the first time,